Welcome to the Energy Summit. This is our session on Secure Mobile Worker, brought to us by Matt Nalbone. No, thank you, Roland. I appreciate it. And so just to level set, I've 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 borrowed some of the formatting from some of um, Keith's slides just because I like them so much. So we're just going to put a little emphasis on some of that and just take that a little further because the, the idea of secure mobile worker or connected worker or workforce enablement or whatever we want to call it really ends up being the same thing um, as far as what the end game is and the outcomes are for those who are employing the solution. Um, I mean, first off, it's it's a connected modern workforce. Right? We hear that tossed around a lot, but what does that really mean? It's it's people being in different places at different times, being able to connect and access the tools they need to get their work done. And it could be tools, it could be data, it could be each other, right? So being able to pull that together, that's the idea of a connected modern workforce. Um, so the, the whole, sorry about that, I backed up, right? Um, the, the connected worker, while they are people who have wearables and smartphones and tablets and other types of products, but what makes them connected is them being able to exploit the data, their applications and the tools they need to get their job done in the safest way they can. That's the most important aspect of a connected worker. I mean, you can give anybody a tablet, but that doesn't mean that they're connected necessarily, right? It just means that they may have access to a, a, a checklist or you, maybe they're playing solitaire, right? You don't really know what's happening by giving them, I don't know what's going on with my mouse here, I apologize. Um, what they're actually being connected to. So that's that's one thing to really consider. Um, so this is one of those slides. I, I like the way that this, this came across and the other one, so I wanted to use it because it's not really just a complex, um, oh, that kind of got wonky, didn't it? A complex communications environment, it's a work environment, it's everything, it's the applications, it's the people, it's being able to still use office computers, it's keeping up with the safety components of everything, it's minding cybersecurity, who's bringing what devices, I mean, all of the technology is wrapped into what we understand as being a work environment. And that's what makes it much more complex. So what are the drivers behind all this? A lot of this is about the human and machine interaction, getting people connected to what they need to see, what's happening with their equipment, their responsibility. Um, it's it, it's being able to access those things instantly or almost instantly to be able to take care of what they need to. Um, QR codes are everywhere. You don't have to memorize what a piece of equipment anymore. You just walk up with a scanner, your phone, whatever, be able to find out what it is, what a maintenance plan is associated with it, where you are physically located, because sometimes you lose track of that while you're in a plant. Um, so making things easier and more accessible in a shorter period of time. Uh, and field jobs, right? Because of the shifting skill sets and people not really understanding what the industrial job is all about, it's getting harder to fill some of those positions of people that may be retiring, uh, moving on to a different position within the organization. So taking this connected mobile worker makes more people more efficient so that even if those unfilled jobs um, remain unfilled, those tasks could still be still be completed and it's not about eliminating jobs or eliminating people it's being able to accommodate and being dynamic enough to adjust to what those changes are and it's all about applications right applications are at the heart of everything we do your bank of america application your charles schwab application um your grocery ordering application we all understand how that works we, we're getting them every day we use them every day on their phones so adapting to that m mode of operation in a in a work environment, especially an industrial work environment, makes sense. More people understand it, more people can understand it, um, how to use those things because it's familiar. And it's about content and context, right? Real-time data to what I'm doing right at the moment, right? You refer to the QR code. I'm at a valve. I'm not quite sure how to handle this. I scan it. I now have content and context related to what I'm about to do. And Roland, feel free to stop me at any time you want or anybody has any questions, please let me know because I can't see any of the chat going on. And some of the other drivers and outcomes that are related to this, uh, it's measurable, right? Digitally empowering employees can increase your revenue growth of over 5%. And these are the people, I mean, it's not me making it up. It wasn't Roland, certainly not telling me these things. It's, it, it's referenceable that you can go out to this Forbes Insight um, survey and find out that 
there are customers or companies out there that are getting these results. Uh, McKinsey has a 20% increase in personal productivity for their personnel who are connected and able to access their applications as they need them. Uh, it, it, travel, PG&E reports 2 to 10% reduction in uh, their carbon footprint, reducing vehicle accidents, uh, travel expenses. Obviously, that would result in insurance decreases. There's a lot of things that can be tied to this. And then looking at some of the other things, you have a lot of millennials moving into the workforce. I know I have two uh, children who are considered millennials, and I know how they feel about some of these things, but they will be here and part of these workforces it, within the next decade. So modernizing the jobs that they'll be doing and how they'll be accessing things is important. They will want to come to these dirty jobs if they're modernized or they're they're in a way or perceived in a way that might be, might be better. I'll use air quotes around better. And then, of course, 40 percent of the workforce will be eligible for retirement. That's coming up, and that was the silver tsunami that uh, I think Keith was referring to, is that how do we get the knowledge out of the hands of those leaving these organizations into the people who are coming in? So there is a, a value that can be associated with these connected workers. It's moving everything from the left, right? Things that are in the operation side, the things that are in the field that may be inaccessible unless you're standing there, moving it through a process, getting data from sensors, pushing it to expertise, and that could be people, that could be application, giving the result of that analysis to someone in the field, connecting the workers to the information who can enact action and get things fixed, repaired, um, eyes on something, being able to address those things. It's actionable data. That's what the heart of connected workers is being able to have some data, information, and making it actionable in a way that it can be more efficient or better. And out of that is a creation of the knowledge, right? You, you are continuously building the knowledge bank and being able to transfer knowledge as all of these processes still happen. And it's, it's about a human centered infrastructure, right? It, it's kind of a weird term. I don't remember where I heard that phrase, honestly, but that, that summed it all up, right? It's humans. We are all at the middle of all of this, right? We, we, we layer technology on top of everything, but it's still the humans that are in the middle of all this. It's the mobile workforce. It's looking at digital workflows, understanding how some of these work, getting that digital knowledge, being able to share it and pass it on, the safety aspects and, and a vision, right? Where are we going to? What do we want to be when we grow up? And how do we step through all these things together? And then you have to be able to layer in the scalable value. What are the things that you're going to get from those independent digital initiatives? How can I use them and how can I leverage them? And how can I associate my company dollars, or my customer dollars with those things so that it can resonate with them? How can they build more and better business use cases so that they get more out of their investments? And so the areas of impact within this, uh, it, within operations, we can look at the reporting, right? Visualization. How can I show people what I see? How can I share what's going on and be able to document some of the things that may be happening? As the workflow is concerned, that digital checklist. There's there's nothing worse than going through with this piece of paper checklist that I have to go through and oh yes, I saw that. Yes, this looks good. Yeah, there's nothing coming out of that that valve that shouldn't be. And then having to take that back and either enter it into a spreadsheet or worse, hand it to somebody else to put into a spreadsheet, right? It gives us digital access to these checklists, these workflows. How can we make all of these things better? Remote assistance. When I get to a certain place in the, in the plan or facility or out in the field, this isn't quite right, right? This really speaks to what Keith was talking about too, is the multiple uh, um, dynamic, the, the multiple ways that we can communicate via push to talk or a phone, but being able to share the same core communications. Um, obviously, audit and compliance. Once you digitize this and connect an employee, I have a more um, impactful array of data. I have more people contributing to that audit and compliance. I don't have one story. I can have 14 stories now and aggregate that to say, no, that's actually what happened. We can correlate and corroborate information and data, which goes to the rich collaboration. Having people talk to each other. As, as part of their daily operations, being able to understand who's doing what and how they're doing those things. And of course, the data entry that goes along with that. And then all of this can be wrapped into reliability, not only of just equipment, but reliability of my operations, my people, how they're interacting and what they're doing. Hey. And I know I talk fast, so. 
Um, I'll, I'll get let you breathe for a second. Um, can you uh, can you talk a little bit about what uh, um, what apps would let people do these things? Like, because these all sound like really cool ideas, and I could kind of picture them happening. But um, but how does this become real? Like, how do you go and buy something like this? Well, you, you don't buy a box of this, right? I mean, this is there's some foundational pieces that have to be put into place. There's obviously a lot of partner uh, relationships that have to be. Um, out there so that you can leverage this. I mean, if you just want to spout out different applications, obviously our friends at Emerson fit into this quite a lot and how they have applications and things that can contribute to a lot of this, right? They don't, they don't necessarily stand alone and do these things. They provide a lot of the data and the access to the things that make these things happen. Um, other applications would be something like a P6, right? The Primavera, something like um, Unifier, uh, maybe Maximo from IBM. So all of this rolls into that connected worker, right? W giving them access to the data and the applications is at the heart of all this, right? And all of the all other these, components like, like what Keith had, they, they all contribute to this one big vision of that, that connected worker. I guess, I guess pretty much anybody who makes software that's usable, useful in the OT environment has some kind of an app. Right. Is that fair to say? Like everybody who's building software has now pretty much got a mobile app. Well, I don't know that they have a mobile app necessarily. And that's kind of the thing, right? That's that's why you want to give them connectivity with the appropriate type of devices. So it may not be an iOS app. Perhaps it's still a Windows application. Maybe they ported it to something like a, a terminal server or you know access like that. That I still need a, a Windows or or a or an Android device to be able to connect to it. But that that all factors into it. And that's why I said there's not just this one. Here's right. this box of this that you can buy. You have to be dynamic enough and have the foundations in place to be able to adjust to all these things. But it is real. I mean, we're seeing this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where the more value is. The more applications you can put in this bucket, if you will, the more valuable it comes to the overall organization and clearly to operations. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, of course, there's the areas of impact regarding HSE, right? Employee health. How how are you doing, right? If it's, you know, the people that are from Houston, we know how hot it is. It's a, it's a cool 78 degrees, but it feels like 175 because of the humidity, right? How are people doing? How are they fatigued? What are they, you know, how are they interacting? Are they at their peak, right? We don't want anybody um, failing from a, from a physical standpoint in these high risk environments. Um, being able to get safety notifications related to that. Did somebody just take off their, their hearing protection? I want to know about that because they're in an area that they, we need to be compliant in that. Confined space is working. Who's in there? Who's not in there? Is there somebody there that shouldn't be before something starts happening? Are they? Is the permit clear? Why is somebody already in there? And then, you know, alerting the ERT people when there's something going on. Incident response. Again, data is at the core of this. How you get the data, where the data come from and where it's going. To me, it's it's connectivity. It's collaboration. And its applications; those three things together make up this connected worker vision. And then there's some specific use cases we can talk about that are not necessarily technology driven. Uh, use cases of worker awareness. I kind of touched on these in those other slides before. This the field mobility, proximity detection. Is somebody in a go no go zone? And it may not be confined spaces. It could be because it's moving equipment. I need to know that. Somebody's there, a role, and why is he behind the crane? We need to make sure we shut everything down in, in an efficient, in an efficient way. Augmented reality, as silly as that sounds, in some cases, it's depending on how it's implemented that it can be value valuable. We're not talking about um, virtual reality, right? Those are two very different things. AR is augmented reality, having some kind of view that helps my real life view, whereas VR is more for it's totally fake. I do a walkthrough. Um, I'm doing training. It's something like that. So that's that's the difference there. But the augmented reality is something that is happening. Uh, people are using that either as replacement for tablets or just being able to have easier access to things like workflows or being a visualization or maybe some mobile HMI. Yeah, and so there's a ton of business benefits, and this is what we really need to focus on. These are the most important things. The technology is great. Obviously, we're a technology company. 
we love the technology that we're working with and we're implementing, but it's the business benefits that we really need to focus on, right? It's the safer workers, it's better productivity, uh, better asset management. And asset management could be physical assets, it could be people assets, understanding how they're working and that we're best utilizing their skills and their time. Uh, mission critical information, the aging workforce support, again, that comes up. Um, I'm no spring chicken myself, so I don't mind talking about it that way. It's it's something that we're being faced with as part of either the changing workforce, um, operations offshore specifically, looking at you know reducing POV because we either going to have less people or we want to de-risk those environments, and then actually having true communication with each other and on a whole slew of different devices and mechanisms because that's what's going to connect everybody to be able to access the assets that they need. And I know I'll move through this fast, so okay. please stop me at any time. So okay. the things to consider before you implement this, and I know I haven't given you a, a, a architecture or here is a plan for this, a blueprint, because I don't think that there is a single blueprint for a, every customer. You have to look at what are the outcomes we're trying to drive to, what's our existing situation, how many plant, how many facilities, how many areas we want to enable with this. And then you have to step through that to make the determination of the path. So, but some things to consider as you go down that road is what's the value prop behind each use case? Because every use case is gonna have a different amount of dollar investment as well as ROI associated with it. What are the big benefits that come out of these use cases? This is where the business case, this is where that big discussion with your global engineering team has to happen because they're the ones that are gonna have to sign off on this. Making sure that you can embed these use cases into operations. Because if it's a one off or nice to have or, yeah, that's that thing over there we don't ever do, it's not going to get adopted and therefore there will be no value to it. So you have to make sure that you're changing operations to be able to adapt to these new capabilities. Uh, the usability and utility of the apps, it has to be to your point earlier, Roland, we're doing it. There is a value to this application I have. I want to make sure I extend it. Uh, where I've talked to customers before is they have a, an investment in, let's just pick Oracle. Um, their investment is significant. They would like to be able to use it more. So what do we do? How do we get it to more people to be able to access that and be able to get more out of our investment in that application? Uh, having proper change management. Um, a lot of times you'll see some of these projects fail because they're not notifying and educating their workers that this is happening. And then it's a surprise and then nobody wants to do it. And then you meet that, that you know, groundswell of resistance because it's different. And then, of course, security. Security's got to be at the forefront of this. When you put mobile, mobility, all of this into somebody's hands, you have to make sure that it's being secured appropriately because you're giving people the potential to have access to things you don't want people to have access to. They can either change data, access data that you don't want out there. So security has got to be at the forefront of this type of operation. And then as a sample multi-phase implementation, um, we talked about this earlier with the LMR augmentation. That's a low hanging fruit. If you look at something like Instant Connect, you can get that in quickly. You can start people's minds working around what does it mean to be connected and dynamic and how can we access some of the features that Instant Connect does and then extend those into some of these other areas. A basic collaboration uh, with WebEx. It could be a desktop unit in a control room with somebody using a, a WebEx client on a phone somewhere else in the plant to be able to have instant access to somebody as a board controller. Um, obviously the mobile application access and then industrial wireless. That is the foundation. Connectivity is the foundation of all of this. If there's no connectivity, none of this works together. And then just obviously stepping through these phases that gets more and more complicated. But as you step to the right, you actually get a lot more value from them. But you can't just jump to, you know, real time equipment monitoring. You have to have those foundation, some of those foundational pieces in place, like the applications and the connectivity. Um, obviously, it would depend on what kind of real-time equipment monitoring. Some of those obviously stand alone. You can implement just parts and pieces of that, and it's great. But if you're looking for a fully connected type scenario, it's got to be kind of stepped through in a, in, in a methodical way. And then the connected mobile worker drivers themselves. Uh, I don't know why this is in here twice. <laughs> Let's look at the solution components. Um, this looks a little familiar from what we had with 
um, Keith earlier on the connect on the instant connect side, but this is a little more centric to an overall connected worker. Obviously, the same topics are there, the collaboration, the infrastructure, the security infrastructure that's both physical and cyber. It's not an exhaustive list of products and, and features. It's just here's the things that you need to think about as you move through um, implementing something like this. And then the services, right? They're they're very similar. It's discovery and strategy workshop. It's a lot of implementation services that you'll be leveraging, um, support services as you move forward. And then the partners that I talked about, right? The PTT and radio, obviously with uh, something like Instant Connect, rugged and Haslock endpoints, operational applications, automation solutions, people like Emerson step in with all of that type of things, the resellers we contact. And then of course the system integrators that help us beyond what our capabilities might be into integrating it into your applications and your environments. And then what it all looks like just together, right? The single, here's everything we just talked about, the drivers behind the investments, why you wanna be there, um, the, the technology enablers. And again, it's not about product specifically, though I can map products to every one of these things, but it's about the technology that you need. So what's the technology? Now let's see what is that part that we need to do this for us. And then what are the field workforce people that may be able to take advantage of something like this? It's the field techs, um, it's the, the people in the refineries and, and plants themselves, it's, it's project managers, it's um, controls engineers. I mean, there are not, I don't think there's a position, even a tool pusher in these environments can get value from having access to some of these applications, even from the simple standpoint of walk down inspections and be able to, to report on, on different environmental issues uh, and pulling all those applications, like I mentioned, Maximo, P6, the unifier, doing permit to work. I mean, all of it wraps in. We look at it individually all the time. We talk about these things as an independent thing, but they all can work together. They can all come together to create that digital workforce, the connected worker, the enabled workforce, I mean, whatever we want to call it. It all, it all culminates in that access and connectivity and applications. And that's that's all I have. I kind of blew through all that, but if uh, we I'll have anything I'll else, Roland, I'd be happy to talk. Can you go back a second? Yep. Um, the uh, I got a couple of questions. Um, you did such a nice wrap there. I don't want to kind of open it back up again, but the uh, questions I have, I guess, are, are there's two, right? So first of all, um, where, where do people start, right? Because you put a lot of ideas on the table. Um, and you had a sample kind of three phase kind of option, but people don't all start at the same place. Like, is there kind of a couple of key pieces that everybody starts with? Um, and then obviously the use cases are specific to whatever's operation or, or talk a bit about that. Like, where do you start? So that, that's a huge depends um, because yeah. I've had different customers who are, are facing a, a radio system upgrade. Right? right. So now it's like, okay, I can invest $5 million in a complete radio system upgrade for this facility, or what are my options for that? Okay. Well, we could look at something like instant connect. We can do that augmentation um, operation, but what do we need for that? Okay. We have wireless now that we need to bring into place. It could be Wi-Fi. Okay. Well, before we make that leap, let's talk about some of the other applications that we might want to extend into that. So right. the approach is usually predicated upon what the, what the condition is of the specific customer and what they're what's driving their need for change um it, it could be them working with emerson to come in and say hey we want to do all these wireless efforts we have these y heart devices we want to put in here how do we begin to connect all these things to some other applications or to some other areas within our organization and sorry mo sam if i'm covering some things you're going to go over um that's where it has to start. That's where it, that's the genesis for a lot of these projects. It's not like here's step one, step two, step three. Somebody's step one might be somebody else's step three. Uh, it just depends on where they are. And I think that's up to us um, to be able to understand that. And I say us being on this side of the, the discussion, how can we interact with the customers and understand better where they are positioned to be able to provide what's necessary and not just, oh, I've got my playbook I'm going to go through. Right. So it, it so it could be something different for everybody, right? It's kind of you start with whatever your pain point is right now, and then right. what kind of balloons into pretty quickly is if I'm going to go into a digitization effort. I think what mistake I see some people make is they say, "Well, I just want to solve this one problem," right? right. And then and, that's, and then they that's, get really really focused on just solving that problem, yeah. 
when they could they could use that opportunity to solve a whole bunch of problems and it's going to cost maybe a little bit more but then you've solved all these other problems too right yeah and and that's john there's there's an opposite problem too it's like i have this one problem i want to focus on you have the other one that says i want to have a flagship facility ah, okay yeah. well what does that mean first off and then secondly how do you even get there right that's like you know that that's that's moonshot almost right that's kennedy saying hey we're gonna be yeah. on the moon in nine years right, right? we're gonna have a flagship life. facility yeah. yeah what does that even mean at this point right so you have to be able to navigate those waters to be able to understand that better and again it's those considerations i said the top of the list there was about um understanding those use cases and what is the value prop associated with them because that way you can actually go through and prioritize what these projects are, even in a little simple two by two, right? What's the time to implement? What's the time to value? Pick the lower right-hand box. You know, it's That's, easy, Yeah, I, I, easy. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know what? It's, it's helpful to think it through that way, right? Because there's so many things you could do. Um, on the one hand, you might have a really hard time making the numbers work if you stay too narrow. But on the other hand, if you go too wide, you can get paralyzed, right? So I think it's somewhere right. finding that middle ground and stepping through it in a logical way, right? I think that's- Yeah, if you have no direction in these things, the the budget balloons rapidly. Yeah. And you can't keep, you can't possibly keep up with the value proposition with the expenses that would be associated with it. If you can find an anchor use case that, that makes the numbers work by itself and you start with that, then right. everything else is a bonus, right? Yeah, I mean, to, and not to be too specific, I mean, we've worked with customers where they wanted to try out wireless in this type of environment, weren't sure how to approach it. So it was something like, okay, well, let's put wireless in a in a warehouse or in a laydown yard or something familiar that's controlled that there is value with providing connectivity in those locations, either for the workers or for the inventory and heavy assets that you're trying to keep up with, yeah. right? That's something that, Hey, where did that generator go? Well, I don't know. Where did it go? I had three here and now I've got none. You know, well, yeah. Roland's got three on his truck because he didn't know if he'd need them or not, but he took them all. And now I have no way to keep track of it. So now I'm ordering three more generators to refill this. So yeah, I mean, I it's can... simple, but it's nice because it's controlled and they can quickly see value in getting that type of connectivity. Thank you for joining us for this session. If this session was of value to you, please like and subscribe and click on the next video. Take care.